Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for another story time today. If any of you were following along, yesterday was an important day. It was World Oceans Day. So people from all over the world were celebrating the ocean, which is a very important habitat here on Earth. So oceans cover about 71% of our planet, or almost three-fourths of the planet, but oceans aren't just on the surface, right? They go down super, super deep. So because they're so deep and so tall and there's so much water in our oceans, they actually provide 99% of the living space on Earth. So there's a lot of habitat in our oceans and it's home to tons of different species. So we're still discovering new species all the time that live in the oceans, especially way down deep in the oceans, because until very recently, we didn't really have a way to explore way down deep in the ocean. They say we've explored more of the moon surface than we have the floor of the ocean. So they're still discovering new species all the time. But scientists estimate somewhere between 50 to 80% of all of the life on planet Earth actually lives in the oceans. So the oceans, like I said, are super important habitat, and they're also super important in helping control climate change. Um, and they're really being affected by climate change and other human actions like litter and air pollution. So the oceans are a place that need our help and our protection. And our story time today is going to be hmm, kind of about an animal that lives in the ocean, but also about a woman who spent her life studying this animal and trying to teach people about it. Okay. Um, so we're going to, the, the animal that we're talking about today is sharks. And some of you are probably like, oh yeah, sharks, those are my favorite. And some of you are probably like, whoa, sharks, those are really super scary. So we kind of have a lot of mixed feelings about sharks. Um, but there are over 400 species of sharks in the world. And most of those species are actually fairly small and could not harm a human. But we don't really typically hear about those sharks. We hear about the really big ones um, that sometimes attack people and it makes us fear all sharks. But to, either it doesn't matter if it's a little shark or a big shark, just like all animal sharks have a really important role in their habitat. So our big sharks that we tend to be afraid of, those are called apex predators. That means nothing really eats those big sharks, right? But they play a super important role by controlling different populations further down the food chain. So for example, they might eat a certain type of fish that might otherwise, if nothing was eating them, the population might grow too big and they might eat all the grass in a seabed. And just like we need trees on land, we need those plants underwater too. They do the same thing. They're making oxygen and they're absorbing carbon dioxide. So those underwater plants are super important. So sharks might help control populations of animals that if they didn't control them, might get too crazy and might eat up all those plants. And that's just one example of how sharks are beneficial to the environment. So, like I said before, sharks, just like any other animal, play a really important role in their habitat. And sharks have been around doing that for a very, very long time. So sharks in the fossil record go back to over 400 million years ago before even dinosaurs and they're still here today so they must be pretty important right? today's story isn't necessarily about sharks but it's about a woman who from the time she was a small girl just absolutely loved sharks and she was born in 1922 and way back then we didn't know very much about sharks so people thought sharks were just kind of dumb killing machines and she was determined to prove them wrong um, and became a scientist who studied sharks. And again, back then, there weren't very many women scientists. So she was pretty extraordinary for her time and is a fantastic reminder um, that we can do anything we want because people told her that she could not do that and she didn't listen. And she spent her whole life studying sharks and teaching people about sharks. And you know what? It turns out the more we know about something, the less we have to fear that something because we can understand it better. That doesn't mean some sharks aren't dangerous. It just means that we know more about how 
they survive in their habitat and how they interact with other things. And then that enables us to be in those habitats and interact with them more safely than we could before. Okay, so when we know more about something, we respect it more and then we don't have to fear it as much. And she really helped change how people feel about sharks. So our story today is called The Shark Lady. The true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. It was written by Jess Keating and illustrated by Marta Alvarez McGuinz. Ooh. Look at all these different types of sharks. It was Saturday and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow of fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to swim with her sharks? to breathe underwater with gills of her own. More than anything, she wanted to find out. How do you think Eugenie could do that? Can she breathe underwater? When the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at the beach in Atlantic City, stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out, Eugenie dove down, down, down. The salt stung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled the pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean like a current. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. I bet some of you have that same thing. Maybe there's an animal or something else that you're really interested in, and you just want to learn everything about it, right? Because it's so fascinating to you. So that was Eugenie and Sharks. So she dove. This time in the books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her pages. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies and clownfish and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, a sanctuary. Do any of you have a fish tank at home? As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks. Be a secretary. Be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans. And they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie doesn't look so happy about that. She plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they were put together both inside and out. 
sounds like Eugenie was working really hard for what she wanted. Despite all of the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. What do you guys think? Do you think that it would be fun to dive down deep into the ocean or would you be a little scared to do it? Maybe you feel both, like it would be really exciting, but maybe a bit scary too. That's okay. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had not been discovered before. So let's see what she found. Red Sea Sand Diver, a barred Xenia pipefish, and a volcano triple fin. On a research mission exploring the Palau Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mujeres, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she swam through dark caves, still and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon, they began to call her Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. She proved them wrong. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more. But she never forgot, many still believe that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputation, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugenie fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than anyone knew? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned that they could remember their training for at least two months after. Did you know that sharks could be trained like dogs? How? Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. So nowadays, a lot of kids grow up loving sharks and wanting to learn all about them. And that wasn't the case when Eugenie was a little girl. So she changed this for many kids around the world. Shark bites. So these are just some fun facts about sharks and I'll read through some of these. It says dangerous monsters? No way! There are over 400 species of sharks and of these only about a dozen are known to be dangerous to humans. A dozen is about 12. And encounters are extremely rare. The truth is despite their fearsome reputations, humans are much more dangerous to sharks than they are to us. Every year, humans kill more than a hundred million sharks. It's important to treat sharks with respect, but there's no need to fear them. No toothbrush here. Sharks have impressive teeth. Arranged in rows along their gums. These teeth are constantly being grown and move forward in their mouths like a conveyor belt. Was Eugenie afraid of sharks because of their sharp teeth? No way. She was only bitten once in her life and the encounter didn't happen underwater. How could that be? Once on her way to a school visit with the mounted jaws of a tiger shark beside her in the car, Eugenie had to stop quickly at a red light as she reached across the seat to stop the jaws from tumbling forward. The teeth chomped into her arm. That's pretty funny. 
So sharks are constantly losing and replacing their teeth, which is why some of you might own a shark tooth. Lots of times on beaches, they'll wash up on beaches and then they might be sold in souvenir shops. So lots of people own shark teeth. Sneaky skin. Sharks can move extremely fast in the water and a secret to their speed is their skin. Shark skin is made up of dermal denticles, which are more like teeth than fish scales. Some swimsuit designers have eyed creating swimsuits that mimic shark skin to help Olympians swim faster in the water. Whoa, that is pretty cool. Mermaid purses. Some sharks give birth to live young. Others, like the dogfish, produce unique egg sacs that sustain their young. These leathery sacs are known as mermaid's purses, and they provide the young shark embryo with a safe place to grow. Sometimes it's possible to find mermaid's purse on the shore if you look carefully. As a kid, I grew up in New England and we used to walk along the bays of Cape Cod and we would find these all over the place and I thought they were so cool. Life at the top. Sharks are apex predators. This means that they're at the very top of the food chain in the ocean. Because of this, they play an important role in keeping food webs and prey populations in balance. Without sharks, ocean ecosystems would collapse. So again, we need sharks. It also has a timeline about um, Eugenie's life. Um, so I won't read all of this because a lot of it was already covered in the book. But again, she did a ton for sharks and to help us learn about sharks and make new discoveries about all sorts of fish, not just sharks. Um, and it was kind of her legacy that all species need to be protected because they play a role in their ecosystem. So even if we as humans maybe don't love them or maybe we're a little scared of them, that doesn't mean they don't need to be protected. So yesterday for World Oceans Day, people were talking about sharks and oceans all over the world. And so now you can talk about what you can do at home to help protect the oceans. I know here in Minnesota and Wisconsin, we live really far from the oceans, right? But think about it as a family. Is there something that you could do to help the oceans, even from living so, so far away? We also live along the Mississippi River, which drains directly into an ocean. So that might give you a hint about some things you could talk about as a family to help protect the oceans. That is our story time for today. I know we live really far from sharks, but I want you to think what might be outside your door, um, an animal that maybe you fear, right? There's gotta be something in the woods around us that you're maybe a little bit scared of. And then I'm gonna challenge you this week, instead of posting resources and activities, I'm gonna challenge you to learn more about whatever that animal is for you, whatever that scary thing around you is. And learn more. See if you can understand it better. See if you can find some way to respect it on some level and become a little bit less scared of it. Okay. We will see you next week for another story time. Get outside and enjoy. Stay cool. Think cool ocean thoughts as you go through these hot days. We'll see you later. Bye.